Welcome, I'm Bill Wake. We're here working on a kilt calculator to help kilt makers design and work with kilts. Um, today we're looking at the knife pleat, which is a um, somewhat simple way of forming a pleat. And uh, it's a little different than the box pleats we've been doing. So we'll pick up where we left off yesterday. All right, so we have a, it was called pleat designer, and then it became box pleat designer. And then we went and extracted pleat designer back out with all the required methods from it. I, I'm not, I'm not perfectly happy with it. I think this gap stuff is all relevant only to box pleats. It doesn't have anything to do with us in knife pleats. This, it's somewhat, it's somewhat independent of the pleat design. So I, I don't know. The, the adjusted hip, however, is the result of the pleat count times the pleat width. And um, that's not coming, ideal hip is coming from the, the measurements that we took on a person. These come from the results of our decisions about width and, and count. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to see how we feel about this as we do it, but we'll get the thing working first and then, and then make some design decisions about it that may be a different way to organize things. All right. Uh, we ran tests and we had, we just started the knife pleat at the end of the day yesterday, um, the pleat designer. And we first checked that, uh, the, the, the variables, basically the fields we care about get initialized correctly. Then we check that these unused fields have trivial values that we don't care about. Um, let's take a look at those. We're at Knife Fleet Designer. Well, you'd think I could get rid of most of these. Okay. Um, the gap, well, it's not a redundant initializer. Oh, I guess it is. Okay, because an optional defaults to nil. Okay, that's those. All right. That same test should fail. Okay. All right, and then the test that fails, um, get the pleat count when the predecessor values are present. So if we have a hip and we know the size of the pleat fabric and we've set the width, we should get um, the right value for the number of pleats. All right, now, um, let's pull up, oh, let's go pull up box pleat designer. All right, so I learned this morning, um, I had understood that the knife pleats, the pleat width was always like, a half, you know, basically a half, three quarters, one, one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarters for two, that, that it was very standard to only do them to the quarter inch. Um, it turns out that's not really true. It's, it's kind of common and it's maybe somewhat preferred in some cases, but it's also not required. So um, I had thought we'd have to do something about the pleat width to make it conform to all that stuff, but that's not the way it works. All right. Now, I don't know if this is really going to bring out the values we want. Oh, gosh. So, if you, if you set the hip, that's required field, and pleat fabric is required. Um, so, when you set them, something should happen. All right, now, you could, in the box pleat, you divided the pleat fabric by three and and got it. Um, I think we want to say, I, I don't, I don't think I want to start with these tests the way I've got it. I, I think there's a better test to go next, given what I understand now. All right. So 
I think the test I want next is um, pleat with defaults to one. Okay. And I guess we've already established that. No, we haven't. Okay. That should be tested here. Okay. This will fail. With oh, uh, we we should be a value. Not really sure about that. Okay, well, nil is not equal to that. Okay, so let's let's do this. Let's start this off with um, inches one. Okay. I don't know what I bumped to turn that on, but it gets old. <laughs> okay, uh, check this now, should be okay. Okay, when plate is missing, output variables are nil. Plate width. Hmm, well that doesn't make that right. I don't think that I don't think that's good. Okay, let's put it back. All right, and that's redundant. Okay. I'll just say initialize variables properly. Yeah, there's a hot key. It's the it's the world key on my keyboard, which is overloaded with other stuff. Ugh. Um, maybe I don't know. I could probably turn it off. I don't I don't use it very much. All right, I don't use it intentionally very much. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get back to this. Well. Okay, I think this this really is the right thing here. It's just hard to Well, maybe I can maybe I can refactor in what we've got already. So, pleat fabric Sorry, pleat with the value. No, that's not Okay, how is this? Set the hip, set the fabric, set the pleat width, and get the count. Okay. This test clearly fails. Failed before we started this morning. I haven't done that much. Okay. So now, I guess what I want to say is 
kind of like this one if you set the pleat width um, if you set the pleat width then we should we should do whatever you do when you set the pleat width now I don't know if I need to pull out an equations object like I did here but something's got to happen so if needs required value or pleat width equals nil okay we're not going to update others if that happens right I don't think we've proven that so equations dot set width let's go look at that um, yeah we just set the width to the width and then the count we take the hip divided by the width okay now that <sighs> it's kind of right. It's really this one that's wrong. This actually this even with okay um yeah set required is this fabric divided by three is um it's the it's the appropriate thing for a box plate where you're folding in and well i guess i can use the picture we have Okay, so six, well, six, and 20, and box pleat looks like that. So it goes in, up, that's the pleat, and then on, up like that. Um, that, that part's just wrong. Hmm. It's like I want to leverage things, but I don't want to get too crazy either. All right. So the real thing is if if the pleat gets set. Sorry, if the width gets set. Okay, let's just deal with that. Um we we've got well, let's assume we've got the hip, ideal hip. All right, if you set the width, the count should set. So we want to say uh, did set. And then pleat count equals. And I think the the logic is really the same as this. It's, um, well, it's this thing. Now we have... Okay, let's try plugging it in. All right. Um, here, hip, well, width is pleat width. And hip is ideal hip. Okay, so if we come in and... Ideal hip... Uh, dot as double. Pleat width. That is double. Okay. Those bangs are important because they're telling us when something's not. Okay, which one's this? Complete with initializing an optional value with nil is redundant. That seems like an old message. Okay, so if somebody sets the count, we're going to take the hip divided by the complete width round that up and get a count. All right, I think that should pass our test. Okay, but 
um, complete with hmm. Complete fabric is missing output variables are nil. Right, I think we got something weird going here that. Okay. Um... Let's get pleat count when processor values changed to nil. All right, so this case is, um, we set the hip, we set this stuff, but now if we clear the hip, Um, our pleat count should be, oh, but it's always an int. No, I guess I'm not doing the right case. I want to make a case where, well, maybe I can just do this. If I explicitly do nil here. Okay, then this, I don't know what this should be. I guess it should still be 10. We're just, we're, we're still in the default. So even though I set the, the width, I think it's going to blow up. <laughs> I expect it to fail because it's dividing by a nil value. Or dividing a nil value by something. Okay. Yeah, so ideal hip is nil. All right, and earlier we said if ideal hip is nil, well, I haven't proved value yet either, um, return. So don't don't try and update anything if, if the hip isn't set, because that we need that. All right, and so I think this should pass. Um, 10 is just, it hasn't changed, and it's an int, so there's no uh, null value for it. Okay, and let's let's get the other one. Um, when pleat width is nil. Okay, so we, we have a fabric, uh, hip 26 pleat width equals nil. And if you ask for the count, it should just be whatever it was. Um, okay, so it should be unchanged, but it shouldn't blow up. I believe it will blow up. Okay, so the problem is pleat width is nil. Okay. Okay. And then a last one, well, zero would create problems. So let's, let's make sure it's not returning, changing anything when pleat with the zero. Okay. Right. We get a double to int conversion because it's infinite. All right. Um, let's see. Or with dot 
as double is zero. And now we have the contrast. Well, actually, I think this is, I think that we should set the case where the hip is set and the fabric is set. Um, it should default a value in there. So, um, yeah. about initial initial values no they're not initial um, count and width set when fabric oh well hip and fabric are set Okay. Uh, the hip is 20. Okay. And we expect the pleat width to default to 1. Um, have I done it again? Okay, <laughs> um, and the count, well, 20 divided by 1 is 20. And this test will fail. Okay, well, we'll test with two failures, yeah. All right, so, pleat designer. All right, um, well, this is always true. That's not correct. Right, so that's this established non-required variables. There's a better name for those, I'm sure, but. Okay, so adjusted. So ideal hip um, and pleat fabric need to do the equivalent of this. All right, um, we've just established it for the hmm hmm I'm not sure now well we covered the cases where one of each was nil and in fact we've covered the case where they're both nil but this one we've we've set this afterwards. Um, the fabric almost doesn't matter with a knife pleat. <laughs> okay, so well, let's go set ideal hip. Okay. And I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to establish 
Established non-required variables. Okay, create a func, a uh, private func. Okay, and then like this, well, if they're, if they're not available, all right, let's get this one. Okay, so, yeah, if needs required values, well, we can't in a way. And uh, we haven't proved this previous line. So if needs required values to skip, all right. And then otherwise, we're going to have to do the work in the equations. Now, like I said, they're simpler. All right. Hip fabric, pleat width, tentative pleat width. We're just going to make that a one. Okay. Um, yeah, so we just had to round the hip and set the width, okay. Um, so we'll default the width to one. And we'll set the hip, uh, sorry, the pleat count is int of round of ideal hip as double. Okay, so if it's 20 divided by one, well, it's always divided by one, so we'll just uh, make it that value. Um, if it was 20.5, we'd round it, and that's okay. It doesn't change our ideal hip, it just gives our adjusted hips some conniptions. All right, Let's see how that does. Okay. <laughs> Nil. Oh, well, needs required values. That's got to be different. Um, that's pleat. Complete, no, ideal hip um, is nil, or complete fabric is nil. Okay, and I think given what we're doing, we can also add an assert. Um, we want to check designer dot total fabric should be 20 because it's 20 times one. Um, is that a value? It's a double. Okay. Um, and now it'll fail. Okay. And Total fabric equals, well, um, it should be the uh, pleat count times the width. Uh, sorry, times the fabric. Is it the fabric times the width? Complete fabric times the count, right, okay. Yeah, because the, the, it's a pleat fabric is how much is in one pleat. So however many pleats you need, that's how many you get. All right, and it's actually pretty much that. 
which is why I think we're introducing some redundancy. Okay, pleat fabric times double pleat count. And let's see these other tests. I think they can do it too. You set the pleat width. This should be accessible. And it's same numbers. Okay, I get pleat when predecessor changes to nil. Pleat count is nil, but total fabric. Um. Is that a double question mark? Okay. Yeah, so if if pleat fabric is undefined, then it's going to have to be nil. Okay. Um, maybe that's worth its own, own thing. All right, let's see how we are. Okay, yeah, pleat fabric is nil. Okay, which test is this? Oh, okay. Um, and it's pleat fabric and pleat count. Pleat count is always available because it's a pure int. And pleat fabric is not. Complete fabric, ideal hip or set? Optional 140. Oh, yeah, because that number is wrong. <laughs> okay, it's the pleat fabric times the count. So it's 20 pleats times 7 is 140. Okay, and same deal here, right? 6 should be 120. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this was um, in, well, set initial width and count when update, when hip and fabric are both available. And um, maintain total fabric. Now we've done one side of it. We haven't done the other. Okay, so. I guess this one is fabric then hip. And this one is hip and then fabric. Okay, so knife plate, um, very similar. When you set fabric,
Get bleak out once nil. No, I don't think this one's right. Twenty inches and in fabric six. It should have set the value to twenty at that point, and then nil doesn't change anything. Oh, was it twenty? Yeah. Okay, so it establishes the value. Let's let's do one of these kind of setup test things. Um, I'm going to verify the initial conditions before I check that the change makes no difference. Okay. Okay, and this one, yeah, again, um, it should be set to 20 at this point, and then the setting the width to zero just ignores ignores any potential change. Okay. Now, um, let's see, adjusted hip and hip was adjusted. Again, this just feels so repetitive to what we've already done. Um, well, adjusted hip should get set. And it's really just the, um, the product. Adjusted hip, yeah, if, if a width is no, we can't tell you what it is, but it's really this. Yeah, that's really what it is. So let's check. Um, well, when complete width is nil, adjusted hip should be nil. So let's find a test that has width being set to nil. Adjusted hip. Well, this one comes out perfectly because it's 20. Okay. Um, let's make a new one. Okay, if we let's make this inches twenty point five. Pleat fabric doesn't really matter. Pleat count should be twenty. I think it'll round up. Um, twenty one. Okay, and then. The adjusted hip. Has to be 21 as well. And. Um, hip was adjusted. Is going to be true. Oh, is he a value? Okay, so he's not, um, 
He's not being set here. He's not being set there. And I think there's a place we have to do one more. Oh, we don't check adjusted to hip. Oh, it's nil here. Okay. Um, let's add one more case. Let's. Well, this is weird, right? Because adjusted hip is pleat count, which is always a value, and pleat width. Okay, yeah, so if pleat width is not set, right, so this sets pleat width, but if we explicitly make it nil, okay, pleat count, um, when width is nil, pleat count, do we care? I don't think we care about pleat count here, but adjusted hip should be nil. And hip was adjusted is false by our standard. <laughs> Okay, and I don't know why I want four failing tests at the same moment, but it's because I'm I'm blocking in this code. Actually, all this. Okay. Now, the only one that's funny still is the case for the fabric. Uh, yeah, sorry, the count and the width being set. Um, hmm. Now, do we have to do this? what the cases are. All right, the, the problem is if we change pleat count, well, it's gonna call pleat count again. All right, because they should, they should mutually change. Okay, so let's, let's define, um, Pleat width changes when pleat count changes. Okay. Change this up a little just so it's not. All right, so if you, if you set Okay, if you do this, it'll say the pleat count is 12 because 12 inches defaults to one inch widths. Okay, and if you then change the pleat count to 10, well, I'm trying to make it so I can do the math. <laughs> Let's change it to eight. Um, now, if you make eight one inch pleats, it's, it's only going to be eight. Okay. So we expect our pleat width to now be one and a half. Okay. 
Okay, so 1.5 times 8 is 12, and so that should be, it should be res uh, set over to that. Okay, and now this is not going to happen because we don't do anything when you adjust count. Okay, so if I did... Um, if I did, then I need to adjust pleat width. So I'm trying to say pleat width equals, um, well, it's, it's ideal hip dot, uh, bang dot as double, okay, divided by pleat count. Okay, um, we'll probably have to cast that. Oh, okay, this whole thing has to be in a value. Um, inches of all that. Again, I don't know why it's not asking me to make that a double. Yep. Okay, so we... We will set the width when the count gets set, but we have this problem we saw before of the pleat count, sorry, setting pleat width now sets pleat count, which sets pleat width, which seems like a bad path. <laughs> All right, so let's see if things blow up. I think they'll crash with a stack overflow or something like that. Smallest and then I need above the width to make a knife pleat. Well, in principle, yeah, fabric can't be less than width. Yeah, we need to we need to worry about that case too. Okay, I don't even have my thing up here. Um, the smallest amount of fabric above the width to make it a knife pleat. Um, well, in in some sense, it's zero. Um, but to really be a knife pleat, it's got to be at least a, you know, a millimeter. <laughs> no. Um, so you've got your pleat fold. That's what we wanted. Um, you, you, have, you have the amount visible, and then, and, and then underneath is however much you had left. So any, any, you know, any little tiny bit will give you a tiny bit of, of overlap. Um, in reality, like I, I've never heard of a, of a set that's like less than four inches. <laughs> I suppose, you know, if somebody's making Barbie clothes, maybe they have some, some fabric sized to them. But, um, but yeah, in reality, the, the set is always going to be big enough that there's, there's room for a knife pleat. Um, you know, but but we should enforce the physical limits. Um, let's let me at least put that in there. Now I don't remember what we did for the equations. Did we? Well, we didn't really enforce anything there, did we? Okay, um, let's see, so, so we've got this, this infinite loop coming in, um, with adjust count, which adjusts width, which adjusts counts, which adjusts width, all right, um, now, uh, yeah, if it's the same size as the width, <laughs> it's just a plain skirt, <laughs> um, Right, so, okay, what we did here, this is this locked stuff. Um, the locked is, there's a, a value that doesn't um, allow updates when we change things, so... 
Was that right? Well, interestingly, these, oh, the action, okay, yeah, the action is when you set the required values, how do you update your, um, your variables on the, on the observable object side? And the way is you call this action method, which which pulls those two values. And we want to make sure that if you set those values, you don't end up back in here trying to trying to do them again. Okay. So that's all this locked stuff. But I think I, I'm gonna reverse directions a little bit. I think I think what we can do, let's rename this. I think this is like set box pleat or um, maybe it's start box pleat. Okay. So what I'm going to do, we'll have to rename this back, but I'm going to I'm going to use that same thing here cuz I think well this is doing here's your min okay hip divided by count right yeah so I think we can use this I just I will have to switch over and that's going to be doing just like the box plate designer. Okay. That was that update. This thing. And again, there's duplication here that I don't like. Okay, import Swift UI. <sighs> and now equations. Okay, so I want this to call whenever things happen. Okay, so this that calls update kind of went, I think let's move this one up a little bit. <coughs> Okay, so establish non-required variables will start box pleat. Well, I just overwrote what I wanted to keep. Um, can I get back easily? Okay, so then Okay. And we're doing that in the others as well. So um pleat count is equations dot set count. And width is equations dot set width. Mm. 
Okay, those all stay the same. All right, now the only thing funny is Starbucks weight is not right. Um, fork knife plates. <laughs> I wanted to make it sound wrong, and it sounds wrong. Okay. So if we start a knife plate, okay, hip is new hip. Now, didn't we just change that to self the other day? I thought we did. I just want to make it very clear it's updating that thing. I don't know why it's not. I seem to keep losing this change. Okay. Um, now, the contents here is coming from this. Okay, so pleat width becomes one, and that's just width. And the pleat count and round hip over to. Yep, and these lose this. Hip is a fixed, okay, it's not an optional. Okay, and that goes away. All right, now I think I've, I don't know what refactoring you would call this, but I've manipulated things enough that I think, um, I'm caught back up. All right. So that goes away. And I'm, I'm forcing those lock changes to happen so we don't get the infinite loop. For what it's worth, it doesn't work. <laughs> okay. We're probably not... Oh, did we call box plate designer somewhere? Yeah, let's do start knife plate. Okay. Well, we'll keep that a minute. All right, let's see what's going on. <laughs> Inches one. Okay, yeah. We put these things in terms of numbers. I, I think I'm... I think it's part of a longer term plan to get things, everything in numbers on this. Um and avoid the values. So check. Okay. Um, modify box pleat equations to handle knife pleats. Okay, we got some comments. Good. Yeah, this thing is just so similar. All right. Um, that should be okay. And then let's rename this to pleat equations.
So, so this is not making. Hmm. Like the most of these decisions are not about box pleats or knife pleats, right? So. Interesting. All right, let's rename this. It's really too bad. I, I don't know. I, I use TCR stuff a little bit where you get an automatic automatic message, an automatic check-in. The messages aren't so good because it's not aware of what you're doing, but um, it's much more low ceremony to just bip, you know, uh, check it in right away without having to fill that stuff out. I don't know. <laughs> it's a compromise. Uh, I, we did some work. Um, I don't know if you've ever taken industrial logics classes but uh the they have a tool that plugs into intellij or eclipse or visual studio and um monitors your tdd checking for refactorings and and keystrokes and tests and so on but one of the things it does is is it can tell you what refactorings you did because the ide knows what refactorings you did and uh, I would love to see it adapted for quick check-ins like that. Just default the message if all I did was refactor. Okay. Um, well, I think we're set in a sense. Um, but let's let's see what's identical between these two. Okay, ideal hit plate fabric. That's identical. Update count and width, identical. Uh, literally copied in. Establish non-required variables. If needs required, plate width equals nil. We're not doing that. Okay, let's let's demonstrate that's not being done. Uh, so, I guess if things started were set and then not set, we unset one of them, then the plate width should be nil. Okay, um, plate width changes to nil when Um, required field goes to nil. Okay, so if we set the hip and the fabric, then the pleat width gets set. In this case, to inches one, actually to number. One. Okay, but if we set the hip back to nil, the plate width should be nil. I expect that to fail because we don't do the same thing we do in the other one. Okay, and it's still the value. Yep. Okay. Uh, box plate designer. So really, it's just this. Establish non-required variables. Okay. Right, and that's the change right there. That's different between the two. Uh, 
All right, ideal hip set. Established non required. Adjusted hip. Plate width number double plate count times plate width. Hip was adjusted. Ideal hip not equal adjusted. I think we copied that one. Um, plate fabric. Established non required variables. Plate count. Equations did set. Should be more there. Yeah, if it needs required values. Okay, so if hmm, if you set the plate count when, well, let's just make the test. Okay, so if we have hip, but fabric is nil, um, pleat width should be nil. And if we set the count, set the pleat count, the pleat width should still be nil. All right, and they try and set it. Okay, so this is pleat count. Otherwise, equations dot set count. Okay. Plate width. Needs required values. Well, this is needs required values. Or plate width is nil. We added this. And this gap stuff is totally totally unneeded. And we we chose values, but we don't care. All right, um, things should be green. Okay, so this thing of making, we're increasing duplication. <sighs> I don't know. The Oh, I didn't get down to total fabric. Let's take a look a little further. Plate fabric equals nil, return nil, there is plate times double. You know, it's really, yeah, needs required value is okay. Now, I don't think Swift is as nice when you need closures. Um, 
Hmm. Okay, so the difference is now is this stuff has computational behavior in here and this line here has to be knife. Um, so what I wonder is, can we make that a constructor? I mean, maybe this is, maybe this just resets equations. All right, let's go back up here. This is all very similar. Right. Okay. Um, well, I, th I think we're ready to push this into more similarity. And it looks like the difference here, it's really this initial pleat width. Um, I think that's the only difference. This can be made the same because one will divide out the same. All right, so I think we will. Oh no, the width is different. Why is the width? Oh, it's recalculating it. All right, we'll have to look and see, but my my feeling is we can make a constructor. I, I think we could make these into two different constructors. One, I don't know how to indicate it, but one one needs to know the this. And I don't know if we know that. Do we have enough similarity to make it go? I don't know. Um, let's try though. So we'll take a break and we'll come back and see if we can change the way this works. So you just come down to, I'd like it to just be a value you pass in. What, what width do you want? And the box plate version passes in this and the other one passes in this 1.0. And it just works. We'll see if we can make that happen. Um, if not, well, there's just so much similarity here. I just want to, I just want to pass something a little different in the two cases. So we'll see. All right, uh, take a break, three or four minutes. All right, see you then. Welcome back. All right. So we know this is the same between the two things. So it really is this initialization. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's, let's push this to be more similar. Well, let's call it tentative pleat width. Move this down. Um, let tentative pleat with equal 1.0. We have equals. 
Oh, now if I divide the other way, is that going to work? Hip divided by one. Doesn't it have to? Let's see, if a hip divided by count, but there's a rounding thing going on there, right? Hip is always the the ideal hip. Um, well, okay, yeah, this comes to what we want to do. Yeah, I mean, we could definitely pull up to a base class, but I think everything is so similar. There's, I think there's literally going to be one line different, um, in which case it seems silly to have a whole base class. All right, now the question is, does this make sense? St does this give the equivalent result? I think it will, except for the fractional ones, and that's what we gotta see. Okay, yeah, it could be a strategy. I, I'm almost wondering if we can just plug in a function. Okay, I'll bet you this is the fractional one. Yeah, okay. And so, twenty point five. Hmm. See, the the thing is. Um, if, like, if this adjusts to 21, then inches, I mean, it can't be, it can't be 20 pleats of one inch or 21 pleats of one inch, right? Because that's not going to equal 20.5. Um, so I think in this case, I think it should be 20.5. Hmm. I'm not sure. I mean, we defaulted to one inch, and so um, we set the count, we rounded things up and set the count to 21. But if we had kept it 20... Well, okay, but even 21, it, it, it seems like, I mean, if we do 21 inches, it's, it's too big. What did it do? Well, we're not checking the inches. Hmm. The width. And if it was 21 pleats to get 20, we don't have to be adjusted hip 21. Um, okay. Yeah, so I think if I kept the pleat with 20.5, well, I should, see, I think I kind of want to do the same thing I would normally do. I want to say, I would do with the box pleat. I want to say, well, if you did a one inch pleat, you would get 21 pleats because you got to choose, you know, 
20 or 20. It has to be a whole number. So let's say you got 21 pleats. Well, then, by our rules, you should adjust that down to less than an inch. So it should be 20.5 over 21 inches. Um, I don't know what that is. All right, let's, let's, let's modify this a little bit to make that come out a little easier. Okay. See, I don't know with the knife kilt, are you going to have this problem of, of adjusted hip? You would if you only did whole numbers, or I mean, like if you restricted your range of pleat widths to half inch, three quarters inch, one inch, or something like that, then yeah, you would, you'd be stuck. But if, um, all right, sorry, let me, let me undo that. So with equals 1.0. Okay. I think I think our test will pass now. Going back to what we had. Okay. So if oh, where are you? Okay. If if we did the adjustment, however, I think I think the adjusted hip should be 19 and a half. Can you get an adjusted hip with knife plates? Hmm. Right. Okay. So let's say we set the, we set the width to one. We realize it's going to take us 20 plates. We say, oh, 20 times 1 is 1. That's bigger than 19 and a half. It should really be 19 and a half divided by 20, um, which, I don't, I don't know, 195 divided by 200. Um, I want to make things come out nice and even in binary. Um, 1.5 divided by 2. Yeah, let's, let's go very small. 1.5 should be 2. And, oh, I forget. Are we, yeah, we're still original style. Okay, I think this example will still pass, but I can do the arithmetic. Is that... Okay. Yeah, so now 1.5 divided by 2... Um... 15 twentieths is three quarters, right? So I think the pleat width, well, let's duplicate this case. I think there's two things going on and I'm getting buried. Okay, adjusted hip, adjusted hip. Um, pleat width adjusted, how about initial pleat? with adjusted when count is grounded. Okay, so this, I want to say that the pleat width is 0.75. Okay, which comes out even in binary, so that's okay. Um, Well, let's see how this is going to fail now. Did you run? <laughs> you did not. Okay. Um, and I think I think this line will fix that. Okay, so I, I think that's the correct behavior. Now, the question is, when do you get an adjusted hip? And I don't know if you can with these. Let's see. I mean, you can make an arbitrary... 
you can have an arbitrary depth. I guess the only case, well, no, if you're. Okay, the adjusted hip comes when the number of pleats is so low it would take more fabric than we have. Okay, let's see if I can make that case. Um, let's say we have a 20 inch hip. And it, let's make a one inch, one inch thing. Okay, yeah, if you set the pleat count to, well, let's make it, make it, no, is that not gonna work? Let's try, I don't, I don't think these are, hmm. <laughs> let's see, if you keep the hip at 20, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, so, change plate width when then get adjusted hip yeah right 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 okay so yeah let's do that so let's start with let's take 20 I don't think the pleat fabric matters the count is going to be 20 now if we um, set the width is 1.5, the adjusted hip should be 30. Okay, that's right. So it's us making an adjustment. Complete width times complete count. All right, so we start, we get the initial Pleat width is one. Um, giving us a pleat count of 20. I guess I should assert this too. Whoops. Okay, now we're... Width should be one. Okay. Yeah, it's not the initial conditions. It's it's the adjusted. All right. So we we do this the normal setup. We get our pleat width. We force the pleat width to something else. One point five. The count stays where we set it, and we go from there. All right, let's see if that passes. No, it does not. 19.5 divided by 1.5, right? 18 divides equally, 19.5 divides equally. So it's coming up with the closest value. Right. Um... Okay, 13. Oh, I'm still not sure I'm... Sorry, if you take 13 times 1.5, what do you get? 13 and half of 13 is 6 and a half. So 19 and a half, okay. Right, so adjusted hip, 19 and a half. Pleat width should be 1.5 because we just forced it. Pleat count adjust to the best guess. Yeah, now we're getting there. <laughs> All right, because it always goes back to the ideal hip, and then it takes the forced number and then adjusts pleat count the best it can, and it can still be off. Okay, 
I think this will pass. I said that last time, didn't I? Yeah, so we're we're forcing ourselves at most one pleat away from from the ideal hip. And it's rounded, so it's whatever is is there. Okay, now this one pleat width is nil, adjusted hip should be nil. That that seems right cuz it's adjusted hip Let's see, go back to adjusted hip. Yeah, if it's nil return nil. It's it's the count times the the width. So if the count isn't defined, then there's no I'm sorry, if the width isn't defined, there's no point. Alright, so I think I think these tests are correct now. And so we we took We've made this more similar, I guess. Now, it feels weird to me because none of this equation stuff, this equation has nothing to do with box pleats or knife pleats, right? Other than what's your initial pleat, okay? Um, in this case, it's a hard-coded one. In this case, it's fabric divided by three. Um, that's... That's weird to me. <laughs> All right. Now we're identical except for this versus that. Okay. So um, let's make, let's extract a method. Hmm. Well, let's call this initial. initial plate with and yet that the final one may not be the same okay I'm gonna push this up all right I'm gonna extract this hmm I'm gonna push this up <laughs> all right and extract what's left Please work. Okay, start pleat. Okay, and I don't know, I like this the other order. Okay, so start pleat takes hip better go and action. Okay. Yeah, now if I do this, okay, I'm going to do the same thing for all this. All right, this should work. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> um, why aren't you working? Wowzers. Okay. Let me. Wow. I don't know what went wrong. Okay, let's make sure this still runs. Whoa, okay, he uses new fabric. Oh, right, right, right. Thank you. Okay, let's move this up. New fabric divided by that. I really want the 
has to be initial width. Okay, let's do the same thing. Okay, um, all right, so, um, bring out the difference between box pleat and knife pleat, how initial pleat is set. Okay, now, can I, I, I'm bad about these closures, so I'm very used to, probably use Java the most on this, but you had a notation to get the, the method and treat it as, as a closure, and blinked out like I th there's a way to do that sort of in Swift but um, it likes static methods better <laughs> okay um, pass instance method to closure in Swift maybe I just need to get an extra parameter or something Completion handler goes to response data. Response data and it is error. Well, oops, sorry. Um, okay, so I can make start pleat. Well, I can make start pleat public, right? Okay. And whoever called start box pleat, well, they're going to take this, right? Which. Start pleat. Should complain. Okay. Missing argument for number four. Okay, what did I call it? Initial. Initial width. Okay.
Oh, I actually do want those labels. Strenuous arguments replace hip, ideal hip, S double. Well, extraneous argument label, initial width. Okay. Missing argument labels. goes away. And let's find his callers. Okay, so I'm I'm basically promoting these to use this. I'm I'm saying instead of this code knowing these values, make the caller give me the the proper initial value. I find it funny that nothing in this equation stuff knows anything about box pleats, knife pleats, military pleats, or anything else. It just knows like I'm using an initial width, and that's the way it is. All right, I guess it's good, but. Who knew? Okay, let's fix the call. Okay, box plate designer, knife plate to the lighter. Again, I'll just make it more similar. I'll take this out. All right. Now, um, I think, okay, we got knife plate designer. Gosh, I'm really trying to avoid the, the parent class thing. All right, so, okay, um, What I want to do uh, after all this, <laughs> uh, I kind of want to go back to just one pleat designer class. Can I do that? Well, okay, I can pass in. Uh, 
basically I can pass in a value you divide pleat fabric by. And I divide it by pleat fabric if I want to be um, if I want to get a one and I divide it by three if I want to get um, a box pleat. What's the best way to do this for factoring? Um, okay, so my choices are I can I could push everything up into the parent class. Um, and then into sorry, take that protocol, turn it into a class, push all these methods up into that class. Um, I don't know if I can do this in a way. Okay, it, we don't have anything outstanding, right? Okay, um, what if I rename this to Pleat Designer? What happens? Huh. Okay. All right, let me. Okay, let me revert to this. He's still, oh my gosh. Ah, okay. Um, let me go to command line. Um, <laughs> okay. I think I can just do, get reset minus hard, right? changes okay what's going on rename night plate designer okay Deleted Pleat Designer. Okay, that's what I want to do. Does this look right? Modified Night Pleat Designer. Deleted Pleat Designer. Okay. Change is not stage.
Get restore to discard changes. Sorry. New changes. Modified knife plate designer. New file that. Knife plate designer exists with the wrong name. Okay. Let's go back here. I play designer. Should be I play designer. Clearly, the way I tried to do it was not good. All right. Um, let's run tests. Yeah, maybe maybe I should. I guess if my tests run, I'll look at it. Okay. I, th I think if I've just got this new file now, oh, it's deleted plate designer, modified that, I think I'm okay. All right, test run. Um, let's kill cut plate slash knife. Okay, I think we're back. But yeah, let's just do a... Okay. Surprised it was that painful. I guess they assume you're just going to change the project when you when you right click here it doesn't select all those automatically good to know but okay so i'm going to give no can i That's not going to work, even. I was going to try and just pass in this this width thing, but initial width. Hmm. I don't know. It's... Hmm. All right. So how am I going to get this up? Okay. One way was turn the protocol into a class, move all the methods up, except provide either some strategy or a closure or a template method or a something to get this value versus fabric divided by three. Now I, th I thought, oh, I could just pass in fabric. Um, the, the, the divisor, but fabric can change. So that, that hurts. <laughs> um, okay. So maybe, maybe that's it is just, we'll just provide a little override method. <sighs> I hate that. Well, maybe that's the easy way, and and we'll make it different over time. I don't know. All right, let's let's find pleat designer. Okay, I'm gonna take this out for a moment. Okay, and I'm I'm gonna arbitrarily make box pleat designer.
um, the parent for, for a minute. Box plate designer. Overriding declaration. I don't want to override. Okay, let me try it a different way. I'm going to make... I'm going to make this be pleat designer. Okay, now, cannot find type plate designer. Okay, you're wrong. Um, these identical methods, I'm going to comment out and leave only the method that I care about. And in fact, I'm going to comment out those gap ones too, because they're just redundant to it. Okay. Update count and width. Okay. Uh, what do I say here? Is it just that? green. No, I'm not. Which test? I play design. Inch is zero. Oh, because there is a difference. All right. Let's let's add that zero constraint onto the other one and see if it behaves right. Uh, where's fleet width? There it is. Okay. Many more failures. Okay, what's going on? One is not equal to 20. Fleet count is one. <sighs> no failures in box plate designer. I don't know what's up here. Trivial default. Okay, that's a good starting point. Oh, well, we don't care about this anymore. We're just taking whatever comes, and that's fine. We're not going to call them. Okay, now this. Pleat width is number one. So pleat count should be 20. One is not equal to 20. I don't know how it got to one. Fabric is seven. Sorry, what's total fabric? Seven. Oh, if this is one, then yeah, there's only one pleat. Okay. Adjusted hip is 20. So the hip, the count is being set to one. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to revert. <laughs> I don't have insight into what's going wrong, though. Initial width. Complete equations. Yes. 
special with doll. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's worth looking at more. Are they all going to come back with one? So setting the pleat width sets the pleat count to one. Do I ever set it to anything? Pleat width is nil. Pleat count was one. This is knife plate. 20 inches with a fabric of six should should set. So it's like the initial state is not Am I not overwriting this properly? Hmm. Okay, if I do step over. Okay, now let's look at self. Yeah, that's too, too much. <laughs> Ideal hip is 20, okay, print. I guess that's already a double. Okay, seven. is one update count width should be hip divided by one is 20. Okay, let's, let's try that again. Okay, I'm going to continue. All right. Yeah, but it it shouldn't matter. Initial width is one. Let's print hip. 20, good, okay. So the count. Whoa. Did I hit go instead of? Okay, so count should be 20, width should be 1. Okay, so this part's good. All right, let's step into over, over, into. 
Or into, oh man. I, I, well, it's a good question. All right, where are we? Here. Okay, and I will stop here. Okay, continue. Yeah, apparently. Do I have different equations? Oh. Good call. <laughs> Build failed. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we're going to um, consolidate pleat designer and its subclasses. Okay, so I'm going to take all this junk out. Well, okay, that's a small step forward. I forget what you say to exit. Um, let's just do this. Override that function. And I want to say Oh no, that's that's not the one.
I don't know. This may be enough. Okay, so now I'm down to an override. Still, okay, I'm gonna take care of Pleat Designer now. We've still got a file for it. Let's, let's move this in. Okay, box plate designer. <sighs> Knife plate designer. Okay. Designer, yeah, I want you in there. Um, okay, um, God. See, this is too minimal to be right. <laughs> um, but we've also got, well, I don't know. This is all okay. I mean, another thing is, right, we, we could let Knife Designer be the default and extract box plate off of it. But I, I kind of want to. It's where I create it. Um, sorry, let's get down to the tests. I mean, I'm not doing anything with this. I think I can create it at the class level. Let's try that theory out. Um, at least JUnit it creates a new instance for every method run. I don't know if that's the case here. Um, I guess we should see it. Well, we mostly won't care. Oops. Yeah, that that's yeah, that's what I really want to do is throw that error. I should have done that before. Um I forget what you do though. It's is it fatal error. Okay, those are working. So let's take these out. 
This is so when I change over, I can just change one place. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, because fabric does change, so um, we can't just tell it the initial fabric and divide it by three or anything like that. So, um, what I'm what I'm wondering if I can do, I wonder if I could just put a a method on box pleat. Sorry, a method on pleat designer. Give it a method called box pleat width and um, knife pleat width or initial width or something and um, pass that to the constructor to tell it what method I want to use. I don't know if that'll work or not. Um, let, me, let me finish these. I mean, I think the more we, if we can get it down to one class, that simplifies our UI stuff too. So I think even though I'm tempted to push through, <laughs> Um, even in the next seven minutes, but okay. So I think I've got them all. Okay, so main test use initialized value and um, designer okay so hmm <laughs> Here's plate designer. I guess you can't pass an instance of you can't pass an a closure method to meth an initializer. I don't know. Um, let me give it an initializer. And that... And then, I guess, initial width is the signature, right? So it's just nothing goes to double. Okay, will that work? <laughs> okay. I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to define box plate initial width equals um
His type is goes to produces nothing goes to double that right okay and let's do knife blade <laughs> We're kind of back into an experiment mode. Did I check things in? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is knife blade. And I want to return the function that returns 1.0 here. And I want to return the function that returns complete fabric divided by 3.0 here, right? Okay. Now this shouldn't break anybody. Okay. Now my tests, knife plate designer, let's do initial width is, and this is how I have trouble. I want to say, like in Java, I would say plate designer colon colon knife plate initial width. What was the complaint? Can I convert pleat designer type? There is a way to do this. Um, <laughs> oh, this is pleat designer. It's still wrong. Um, well. Let's undo this. And then this is where we'll pick up tomorrow. Uh, sorry, this is Thursday, so it'll be Monday. Knife plate designer with plate designer with initial with is the function plate designer dot knife fleet initial width or something like that um, all right that's clearly not the right way cannot convert value of fleet designer to nothing to nothing to double yeah, so I'm I'm on a track. Whether it's the right track, we'll find out next week. <laughs> All right. Anyway, thanks for joining today. Um, if if this works, I think we'll be able to plug things in much easier. We'll see. And uh, next time is next week, Monday to Thursday, two to four thirty p.m. Eastern Time, six to eight thirty p.m. UTC. Also, I just published a new blog today on xp123.com. So um, if you're interested in that. Take a look. All right. Thanks for joining and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.